There is something hiding in San Francisco, and it comes out when the fog comes in. It hunts us, it torments us, and I was unfortunate enough to finally meet it. A few days ago, I was making my way through the city hoping to reach my house before the fog rolled in and it got dark out. Earlier that day, our local weather station had issued a severe fog warning for 6pm all the way to 12am the next morning. It was 5.15 and I still had a good distance to walk before I arrived at my house safe and sound. I had been making decent progress when the already cold temperature dropped even further. The dim lights had faded and the sky became abysmal and dark. The fog had made it, as thick and as dense as expected, but far earlier, roughly half an hour. Not only that, but the sun seemed to disappear below the horizon far faster than normal, even for this time of year. I had walked for a few more minutes when the city seemed to die. All lights flickered off, the air grew colder still and the few cars and people that had been out seemed to vanish, only with a silence and fog remaining with me. With little to no visibility left, I found a familiar sign in the mist. Bayview Estates, my neighborhood. Only a few more minutes and I would be home as safe and sound. It was when I was approaching my house I heard a noise. I froze instantly in terror my heart and muscles shutting down completely from the horror I had just witnessed. A haunting moan echoed through the once silent void around me, the kind of noise that is nothing but raw agony and misery, the kind of noise that no person or being on this earth should be capable of making. It was a sound of pure sadness and despair, then again but different, louder, closer, then again but not as sad but mad, and louder still. I turned around and peered down the street in a desperate attempt to locate the source of the noise. At first, I was only met with the deep fog, but as I looked closer, I noticed a tall and slender figure. At first, it looked to be a lamppost, but lampposts don't sway in the wind or move at all. The creature took another step in my direction. Whether it noticed me or not, I was unsure, but I was frozen in absolute terror. It moaned again, a dreadful melody consumed with pain and rage. It moved closer to me, and I was able to make out its form in slightly more detail. The thing was massive, looking to be about 10 feet tall, with skin gray and red in color with no features whatsoever, all over the body from what I could see. My eyes moved up to its face, long and thin. It was gray in color with red in some places like the rest of the body. No hair or ears or nose or eyes, but it did have a mouth. A massive, grotesque, unnatural smile was plastered across its face, spanning from what would have been ear to ear with blood and other odd substances dripping and running down his face, falling to the ground, leaving a small trail of vile liquids in its wake. What the heck? The thing could not have been conjured up by my worst nightmares and thoughts. The kind of thing that not even in the deepest depths of hell would accept is okay. This was something else. Something awful. It moaned again, 15 feet from me now. But when it moaned, its mouth did not move, not at all. It just stayed fixed in that appalling smile. After it moaned, I could hear other sounds. Something heavy and solid being dragged along the ground at its side. It took me a moment to process what it was, until I looked at the form. A mutilated form hard to recognize, but there was one thing that made it clear to me. A tattered, blue piece of fabric that was wrapped around the center of the object, with spots of what looked like blood, probably from the creature's mouth. And then it hit me. That blue, that fabric. It looked exactly like the kind of thing my... The creature's head snapped suddenly in my direction, bones and joints snapping and cracking with a sickening clarity. 
It was looking at me now, and I was looking at it. I couldn't see its eyes, but I knew it was looking at me. I could feel it looking at me, staring into the depths of my soul, seeing into my mind, twisting it, manipulating it. I felt sick, lost, fearful, worried, and so much more. It made a noise again, something that I can only describe as a violent muffled scream, starting low and getting louder. It took one more step in my direction, and that was my cue to spin on my heels and run as quickly as I could. I just wanted to get to my house where I could hide until the fog had moved on, and hopefully that thing will leave with it. I ran for quite some time, my legs driving me forward in long, powerful strides. I didn't hear anything behind me as I ran, not these screams and cries of anguish and pain, nor thunderous footfalls I would expect that thing to make, just the frigid wind howling through my ears. I arrived at the two-story work of art that was my home, a place that should be safe, should have been safe. I opened the door gently, turning the knob with my cold and dry hands. I stepped in, the lights off, everything quiet except for my labored breathing. My health is not all that good, so that kind of thing would really wear me down. I was sure to lock the door behind me, even turning my extra locks to be sure nothing unwanted would enter. I removed my warmer clothing and then fought along the wall for the light switch, and in turn some comfort. The bright warmth filled the house as, one by one, the lights flashed on. Still shaken from what I had encountered moments before, I walked into the living room, turned on the radio for some music while I made some food. The radio crackled to life and a happy little song started to flow through the air around me. Call me me, and with it, I began to cook. I was in the middle of taking my chicken out of the oven when... The music abruptly stopped, and was replaced by a static and automatic sounding voice. The National Weather Service has issued a severe fog warning for the entire Bay Area, and all locations around the immediate San Francisco area. Conditions have deteriorated to a point where it is no longer safe to be driving or walking outside. Most importantly, lock your doors, close your windows, turn off your lights, don't look or go outside. Have a good rest of your evening, San Francisco. And the voice cut out and the original song returned. What? I looked outside and onto the completely obscured street. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. I couldn't even see the plants in my front garden clearly. But there was one thing about that announcement that really freaked me out. Lock your doors, close your windows, turn off your lights. Don't look or go outside. What the heck does that even have to do with the fog warning? I looked out front again, and I thought of that creature that I had seen in the fog. What if, what if that warning was based on the thing that I just saw now? But why would they warn us not to go outside? We don't even know what it does. We don't even know if it's dangerous. And then I remembered what had been by its side. I immediately leaned over the sink to throw out my lunch. That creature... It had been dragging the mangled and mutilated corpse of one of my neighbors a few doors down, with blood dripping from its mouth and onto the ground below. Oh god, no. Please, no. I quickly walked to my front door and latched every lock I could get my hands on. I locked my windows and closed the curtains with one swift motion, almost ripping them clean off the wall. I stumbled down the stairs to the basement and hid in the guest bedroom. I brought my radio for updates, my dog for company, some food, a few books, some flashlights, and extra batteries, along with other forms of basic necessities for survival. It was a nice enough room, with a decent sized bed, a bathroom to the side, a small window, and plenty of room to move around. Some friends and family had stayed down there before, but that was a long time ago, so it was relatively clean. I set all of my things down in the corner, closed and locked the window, turned on the lamp, and I began a new book. About 30 minutes of reading later, another announcement came on the radio, 
startling me as I had not been expecting it. This is just a reminder that conditions outside have not improved, and are unlikely until the next day. Have a good night, San Francisco. And remember, lock your doors, close your windows. Don't go outside and don't answer the door. No matter what you hear or see. Nick cut out again, returning to the easy listening station I had said it to earlier. God, could I just relax for one minute? There was something new in that announcement though, and it only added to my heightening dread. Don't answer the door, no matter what you hear or see. To hear that kind of thing on the radio is just downright terrifying. I turned it off to listen carefully for anything at all. I didn't hear anything, just my dog breathing heavily as she lay on the floor beside me. I was on high alert now. I had no clue what might have been going on outside, but there was no way in this life or the next that I would be going to go and find out. I decided to turn back on the radio, quieter this time, but at least I could drown out whatever might be outside. Seeing as I was tired from the long day that I had, I chose to give myself a break after a while for some rest. I woke up the next morning to another announcement, similar to before. Good morning, San Francisco. I hope you all had a good night and followed the rules put in place. All the same remain in effect for today. The fog is not yet lifted, and it is still too dangerous to go outside. We advise all citizens to stay in their homes until further notice. And of course, they ended with the same line. I went through the rest of the day without doing much, eating when I felt hungry, taking a shower around lunchtime to clean up, just anything really to keep myself occupied, and my mind entertained and not wandering. It was later toward 6pm, sunset for this time of the year. I was running low on food so I wanted to grab a few more things from upstairs to make it a little more cozy down here, as it seemed I might be spending anywhere from another day to another week hiding. I slowly unlatched the bedroom door and tiptoed down the hallway, and up the flight of stairs to the first floor. I was met by nothing new, all of the curtains and windows still shut. My dinner from two nights ago was still on the table gone cold. I walked into the kitchen, grabbed a bag, and started to pile food into it. I also took a few more batteries and a phone charger. I picked up a few blankets and was about to bring all of my new supplies downstairs when I heard something. A light sound, almost visible, but I definitely heard it. Tapping. It was really quiet, almost like it was my imagination playing with me, but it was real. I looked around, my heart pounding, but I just couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. It got louder, increasing in volume ever so slightly, and even with it being crystal clear after a minute or two, I still couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It couldn't be in the house, right? It continued to escalate in volume, getting louder and louder until it hurt my ears and still, it sounded like it was coming from all around the house. My curiosity got the best of me, and I deeply regretted it. I should have just taken my things and went back downstairs to wait out, but no, I didn't. I slowly edged in the direction of my window. I lightly grasped the curtains and pulled them back ever so slightly. They fell away and off to the side, leaving me to stare into the void. The tapping immediately stopped. I stood there. Maybe I really had imagined it. I pressed my face closer to the window, looking for any sign of the mist lifting. As I did, the fog straight ahead of me began to darken, and slowly an object moved close enough so I could make out what it was. With only an inch of glass separating us, there it was. The same cold gray featured this face that I had seen only one day ago, except this time. Its face it really was featureless. And then it started to split at the bottom half, and a smile began to form, stretching unnaturally wide, spanning the entire length of its face. 
showing its blooded and gnarly teeth. It was back. It was that thing, and it knows that I'm in here now. I panicked, tripping and falling backwards. I watched it fade into darkness once more. I jumped to my feet and I scrambled to the stairs, practically throwing myself down. Everything in my arms. I ran to the guest bedroom and slammed the door shut behind me, grabbed any furniture I did not need, and pressed it against it to form a barricade. No, I had done it. I had broken the one rule that had been said so many times that I knew it by heart now. Lock your doors, close your windows, turn off your lights. Don't look or go outside, and don't answer the door, no matter what you hear or see. I felt so stupid. I had literally seen that thing. That's what the warning was for, not the fog, but for that creature. The creature that knows I'm in here. The radio fell silent, and my dog became quiet too. Something she rarely does. I joined her, listening to every single sound I could hear through my pounding heart. Clicking, not the same as before, but like opening something with a lock on it. It's opening my door. I could hear it struggling with one of the locks. I'd had at least ten done up right now, so I might have some time to live. I huddled up behind the bed frame under a blanket. I heard something metal clatter to the floor. It got through the first one, but then another fell and another and another, and then one more fell, and I heard the door slowly creak open and gently bump into the wall as it swung open. I was shaking with fear, sobbing silently in my awful hiding spot. I did this to myself. I knew it was my fault and I knew that I would never get to see anyone I loved or do anything fun ever again. I wasn't going to die peacefully in my bed. I was going to get mauled to death by the monster that was now in my house. I heard the shuffling of feet, fast, swift movements. They got louder and closer, but then it was silent. I had no clue how close it was. My door flew open, all the furniture flying through the air like it was nothing crash into the floor, leaving me covered in debris. I was bleeding bad, and my chest was being crushed by a wooden beam. This was it. I could hear bones cracking and snapping, my dog crying out and then falling silent. And then I heard it breathe, a strained, mangled inhale, and a similar grotesque exhale. I suddenly felt a massive hand wrap around my arm. My bones are breaking and shattering, piercing my skin like a thousand razor-sharp needles. I screamed. The blanket fell to the floor and I was face to face with this creature. And everything went dark. The last thing I saw was its sinister smile, widening further. My smile now, along with all of those who have died like me, I walk the streets of San Francisco when the fog rolls in, taking lives the way mine was. Don't come looking for me. Don't try to save me. I'm already dead. Don't come here. Stay far away from the Bay Area. It's for your own good. Because something hides in San Francisco when the fog rolls in.